Uh, so I'm Ashley Yao, and this is my student Delaney Dunlap. And so this year, I'm Ashley Yao, and I am Massimo Iorizzo's PhD student, and this is my intern for the summer. Her name is Delaney Dunlap, and we've been working on developing a molecular framework for studying floral induction and bromelain accumulation of pineapple, or Anonymous Comosis Veroni Comosis. So why is pineapple important? It's actually the third most economically important tropical fruit. The only two tropical fruits that are consumed more in the United States are banana and citrus. And it's actually the most important, economically important member of the Bromeliaceae family. It's also a major export for Costa Rica and other equatorial countries. And it's actually an excellent source of vitamins and digestive aids, which I will mention more in a moment. So the Production bottleneck for pineapple is actually naturally differentiated flowering, or NDF. And so cultivars that have a higher tolerance to NDF are more desirable. NDF is characterized by non-synchronized flower and fruit development and maturation. So you can see in this picture here that some of the pineapple plants in this row are in the process of flowering, while others are in the process of fruiting, and one of those fruits is almost completely mature. And this is a problem from a production standpoint. Um, this actually translates to non-synchronized harvest, which is an issue. Uh, so for this project, we're focusing on three important cultivars, and so one of them that is actually NDF susceptible is the most used commercial cultivar, which is Dole 11. And then we also have two cultivars that we're working on that are tolerant to NDF, which are NG2 and Dole 17. And we do believe that this trait is a heritable trait uh, based on preliminary data and the fact that this type of trait has been seen in other plant species as well. To talk a little bit more about the importance of pineapple for human health, uh, pineapple actually contains bromelain, which is an enzyme or a mixture of two enzymes that are used as digestive anti-inflammatories. They also have other medicinal applications, but this is the most frequently used one. And so the biosynthesis pathway for bromelain synthesis is only partially characterized. So we can actually use our NDF cultivars to also study bromelain biosynthesis because all pineapples produce bromelain. So we're kind of going to kill two birds with one stone with this project. So the pineapple genome is actually estimated to be about 526 megabases. And there are two reference genomes currently available for pineapple. The first one is assembled to the chromosome scale. Unfortunately, it's only about 72.6% complete. And uh, so we think that we can improve that completeness. And then there is another one that's available that is assembled to the scaffold level, so it's more fragmented than the other one. However, it is about 99.6% complete, so it's a very complete genome. What we want is to have the best of both worlds. We want to be able to create a reference genome for these three cultivars that are both contiguous and complete. Which brings me to the project objectives. We're going to use a combination of PacBio and Hi-C genomic data, so that way we can assemble a complete chromosome scale reference genome. So we'll be able to use PacBio data to assemble a reference genome, and then actually use the high c data to take that and assemble it into individual chromosomes, which is a very difficult thing to do. Genomes for uh, the NDF susceptible and tolerant cultivars will be used for studying NDF induction, so we can pinpoint the underlying mechanism for NDF tolerance, and we'll be able to characterize the bromine biosynthesis pathway as well. 
So in light of these overall goals, I will hand the mic over to my student, Delaney. She's from UNC Chapel Hill, and she's been working really hard this summer to prepare these next generation sequencing libraries for studying these two traits. Thank you, Ashley. So our main objective this summer was to extract high molecular weight um, genomic DNA with high purity from pineapple leaves. Our second objective was to do um, next, genome, next generation sequencing library prep, or NGS library prep, with PAC bio and phase genomics high C. So our summer started off with tissue collection, and we did it on three different dates so we could get enough tissue for extractions. We collected the youngest leaves, which are in the center of the plant, um, and we flash froze them in liquid nitrogen before storing them at negative 80 degrees Celsius. Then we continued on to do um, the extraction, and we used a C-tab GDNA extraction method, and we had three different protocols for that. So the first protocol was the Xiong protocol, and this gave us very degraded um, DNA. As you can see in this general electrophoresis image, um, there's a big smear down the middle of it, um, which means that it's very degraded. And there's also a lot of RNA contamination, as shown by this at the bottom. Um, so the next protocol we tried was the Charlotte et al. protocol, and this was optimized for pineapple. However, there was, um, while this gave us a lot better results, as you can see by this bar right here, um, of GDNA and the um, high molecular weight DNA left in the well, there was still was some contamination as well as some RNA, or there still was some degradation as well as some RNA contamination. We optimized this protocol and changed the way that we handled our samples, um, and it gave us much better results. So this bright bar right here um, is highly concentrated R, um, GDNA. There's still some high molecular um, weight DNA left in the well. There isn't much um, degradation, and there's hardly any um, RNA contamination. The next thing we did was um, quality assurance, and we started with a 0.6x bead cleanup. And basically what you do for this is you add in, you, you put in um, magnetic beads in with your sample, and they bind to your DNA. Then if you put a magnet next to the um, tube, then it draws these um, beads with the DNA towards the side of the tube. That way you're able to remove the contamination and wash it out with ethanol a couple of times. Um, after that, you include it in a buffer, which separates the DNA from the beads. That way you're left with um, pure and concentrated DNA. We also uh, sheared the DNA with the beetle shearing method to make sure that the um, fragments of DNA were more uniform for our sequencing. So what we did for this is um, we drew out the samples in uh, this blunt needle and then pushed it back out to shoot it. Um, after we did the quality assurance, then we did a packed biogenomic library prep. And this is six main steps. And it can be summarized as um, adding a nuclease to cut the DNA and then doing DNA damage repair. And then um, ligating an adapter onto it that will be used for sequencing. Um, and then just purify it again to remove any of the extra um, components in there. Here are the quality control results. So we did a qubit, which gives us the concentration of our sample. Nanodrop, which tells us the purity of it. Um, tape station, which gives us the um, average fragment sizes. And then we also did an onverse gel, which I showed you guys in a previous slide. So for the, after the um, CTAB extraction of Dole 11, the raw GDNA um, gave us about 5.9 micrograms of DNA. Um, by the end of the final library preparation, we were left with only um, around one microgram of DNA. Um, so we did lose quite a bit of DNA, but it was expected. We also did MGO2 um, CTAB extraction, and we got a around 11 micrograms of DNA. The nano, for the nano drop values, um, the 260 to 80 uh, ratio is um, the ratio between um, protein and RNA contamination, and we're looking for values um, for, of 1.8 or higher. So the values for the 260 to 80 show that it's pure of RNA and protein contamination. Um, however, the 260 to 30 values, which um, shows us the ratio of other contamination, such as ethanol and salt, um, was a little bit lower than we would hope for for the dual flood. Here are the tape station results. So the um, average fragment size of our raw DNA was around 56 kb, which is considered high molecular weight. After the bead clamp, it was around 20 kb. Um, after the needle sharing, it was around 19 kb. And then the final pack bio library was around um, 20 kb, which is as expected. 
Then we did a high C library prep, and this library will be used to scaffold um, the PAC bio reference genome that we are going to use, um, that we're going to assemble um, with our previous, with a, with a, uh, that we're going to assemble with the um, library prep that I talked about earlier. We use phase genomics proximo high C plant kit and protocol for it, and this takes fresh plant tissue and it goes straight into in vivo cross-linking library prep. And if you think of the genome as kind of a ball of spaghetti um, in the cell, then what cross-linking does is it takes a snapshot of how this looks in the cell, um, and that way it is able to um, assemble the contents from the um, PacBio reference genome. Here are the results for our um, high C uh, tape station. So before, um, so our raw uh, library was around 651 base pairs, which was too big for a limit of sequencing that we wanted to do. So phase genomics did a size selection um, and gave us the tape station results for that as well, um, which showed that it was ready for the limit of sequencing. Here are the qPCR results, which gives us the, um, the concentration. So the blue dots that you're looking at on there are the standards, which gives us the standard curve. And then our samples were run um, and placed onto that standard curve, which gave us um, our final library concentration of 13.2 nanomolar, um, which was above the 10 uh, nanomolar concentration that's required for Lumina sequencing. So in conclusion, this summer we successfully prepared a pac bio library for sequencing. We determined that a phase, the phase genomics high C kit and protocol works well for pineapple leaf tissue. We also determined that pac bio Smart Bell Express template prep works without the blue pivot size selection. And we optimized the seed to have GDNA's um, extraction protocol for improved size and quality of pineapple. So I'm going to hand it off to Ashley to talk about our future directions. All right, so for our future directions, what we want to do is finish sequencing these three genomes. So we'll use this summer's library and also prepare a few more libraries to get the correct number of PacBio smart cells. And then we'll integrate different types of genomic data as well. So we'll have these three genomes. We'll use isoform sequencing, small RNA sequencing, and epigenetic data to build a comprehensive network to understand the underlying mechanism for NDF tolerance and also for line biosynthesis. And so we're going to perform the network analysis for those two traits and hopefully characterize these networks a bit better. And so these are some of our references. We are poster number one, if you would like to come look at that and talk to us about it a little bit. And we would like to acknowledge all of these people that made this project possible. Thank you for your attention, and would anyone like to ask any questions?